What is going on guys? Ryan from Live in Salty here and welcome to episode two of the 2021 Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. In this episode, I'm going over I think five different 32 or 31 or 33 around that area. Uh, foot center consoles, I believe we have Jupiter, Regulator, CV, Pursuit and Boston Whaler. All fantastic boats. If you guys are in the market for that kind of a boat, this is a perfect video for you guys to watch. If not, if you guys like me and can't afford a brand new 32 foot center console, then enjoy looking at some beautiful boats. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit the like button and consider, consider subscribing down below. It really helps me out a lot. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this episode of the 2021 Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. Okay guys, I'm currently on the 32 CV. And I'm gonna show you guys some of the things about this boat. So, if we look at the front here, this option, we do not have any seats along the sides, just these side bolsters for leaning against and fighting fish. Um, all this kind of stuff is all customizable. They have different setups where, can I look to see if other boats have it? I do not see it on any of the boats, but they'll have seats that come over here and fold down. So it makes it a little bit more of a family boat instead of just a fishing boat. We have this big, I think it's called a coffin cooler up here. Turn that up. Tons of storage for uh, bait, ice, drinks, food, fish, anything you really want. We got the anchor wall up here. Nice big anchor wall. One thing you'll notice on all CVs is the amount of rod holders that they have. I mean, you got one, two, three. That's a cup holder, four, five, cup holder, six, seven, eight, nine, nine on just one side. Then you have one, two, three in the back with two cup holders, one more down the middle, and another one, two, three, four, five, cup holder, six, seven, cup holder, eight, nine, ten. Ten on this side, nine on the other side. I think three in the back or three or four in the back. So overall, just tons of rod holders, which is great for if you're kite fishing or anything, you can put one kite up in the front, one kite up in the back, and you can have poles. You gotta have your three poles or however many rigs you're gonna run on the kite. You're gonna have all your plenty of rod holders over here to do anything you really wanna do. And also when you get into Mahi, like you guys have seen in my past couple videos, you get a little chaotic. So you can have pitch rods all over the place, ready to go just ready for action when it calls for it. So that's one of the things I really love. I love the multiple rod holders everywhere. The more the merrier, it's fantastic for me. So if you look here, we do have some comfort. We have a nice little seating area. And here's this might open. Nope, don't, don't know about that. <laughs> but in addition, you got uh, more cup holders and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more rod holders over here. And you can see the T-top is actually cut out so you can fit your rod holders around it, which is nice. Another option I've seen, I'm not sure if they're still doing it anymore, but they used to have um, the T-top would be solid. So it would extend all the way over here like normal. And then they would have just one little slit just for the rod holder. So it still gives you more coverage. Here you lose a little bit of coverage, but you don't have to worry about um, smashing the eyes of the pole on anything. Look here on the ground, we have tons of storage. Again, no shortage of fish boxes. So we have another one over here. Another one over here. That might be a live well actually. Got another fish box over here. Tons, tons. I mean fish box, fish box, fish box, fixed box, probably electronic boxes. If you have a little bit of a seat here. One thing that I really love that I've just been seeing done, I've never seen on a CV, but I just noticed it now, is they have the clear um, live walls back here, but they're a curved glass. So if you guys could see that, the glass is curved back here, which is really cool. Um, it just gives it like such an aquarium feel, and I really like that. This particular 32 CV is powered by twin 300 Mercury, Mercury racing motors. Um, so this thing's gonna fly. I'm not sure really about fuel economy for these motors, but just know you're going to go fast. So you also have the dive door over here. So I can't swing it open because there's a boat right here, but normally you would be able to unlatch that, swing it open, 
which is great if you guys are going um, swimming with your family or anything, or you're scuba diving, or you catch a 100 pound tuna and you gotta get them in, <laughs> then you can slide them right the door, which is super convenient. We don't have it on our boat, but a lot of the newer boats have started doing that kind of stuff. If you look over here in the back of the boat, it looks like we have a little bit of, um, oh, probably like a little bit of a rigging station. It's got a little decking material in here to keep it all good. So you could just rig up your hooks and everything like that. Just have like a little workbench to work off of. I'm assuming this could be tackle storage. Yep. We got two things of just storage. Super convenient. Very good use of the space. And then here we're going to have a cooler that slides out, which I'm not going to right now, but it does. Seating. We got a big old bench seat, which I love the bench seats we have one on our boat. And I think they're awesome. Um, super comfy. It's got... Uh, it's got the armrest too, so you can choose to have them up or down. Nice room, and I like to have, this has got a like slant. It's got a nice angle right there. So when you're leaning, you're leaning against it, it's just very comfortable. And then they also have this little step down there. You can put your feet up. And then here you are, this is my eye height. You know, you're nice and high off of the dashboard. Um, one of the problems I have sometimes when I'm sitting down on our bench seat on our boat is sometimes I can't see over like the compass that's on the dashboard it's, it's a little high i'm just sitting down so this really elevates you up and you know doesn't there's nothing blocking my line of sight which is great continuing with the dash here we got all of our switches right here which is really nice and it's got even like a little bit of a, um, acrylic kind of material here um, i'm assuming that so you don't accidentally knock one of these and turn them on because then that can kill your battery which is really cool um, our switches are actually underneath um, a little bit and you can't really see them unless you bend over to the ground which can be a little bit inconvenient um, you know when you're trying to just flip something on really quickly and you just gotta like bend down on the ground that's really easy super easy to see we got two big old simrad machines huge huge screens and I also like that it is inside of this protected case so if you guys follow me on Instagram at living underscore salty with two eyes then you guys will see that I have been posting there's been multiple thefts recently in our area of um, water of uh, electronics that are on boats on lifts and trailers and everything and this is actually in a casing where you can lock it so it just deters I'm sure a thief can break into it if they really wanted to but definitely deters them from even trying and you might not get your stuff stolen which I think is super neat and a great idea and I hope to see on more boats instead of just mounted on the center console so here we got the regular dual controls we got a joystick standard gauges nice black wheel I really like the look of the black wheel cup holders and looks like some uh, an exterior remote to work the Simrad. So if you're in rough seas and it, everything's getting soaked or it's pouring rain, you don't want to open up this hatch and get your screens all dirty. Looks like you could still control the Simrads from this button, which I've never really seen before, which is really cool actually. I really like that. It's a very nice feature. One thing that is interesting is that there is no um, actually like acrylic windshield on this. This is all a canvas. So there's no actual windshield. This is all comes off and can be cleaned yeah there's looks like there is not really sure how exactly it comes off but i'm sure it does oh there we go it's got some velcro on it so you'll be able to take it off and clean it actually and probably polish it pretty easily if you want and one of the things if on our windshield is actually it's all scratched up and it's really old it's 2003 right and it's not really coming clean anymore and so it's a little bit hard to see through it so down the line you have this boat for 10 years if this canvas starts to get um all dirty then you can actually just replace it and then it looks brand new so that's a really cool feature i really like that not sure if it's just this boat but i would have liked to see a little bit more rod holder storage um underneath the uh, side gunnels here i think that could be pretty cool um but like i said they're very customizable so i'm sure it's probably an option just not in this boat we look up top like we have some sort of radar up there we got two outriggers antennas light one thing this thing this boat is missing is a tower and i know eventually when i put all my pennies together and buy my own boat i'm definitely going to want a tower on my boat um, it's super helpful when you're out there to be able to actually stand up on a tower and look out for the mahi as i've seen i end up most of the time just standing on the side gunnels over here which in rough weather can get a little bit sketchy but you know, I make do, but 
having a tower up there would be awesome. If you guys checked out my last mahi fishing video, um, I was on my buddy Chris's boat and he has a tower up there. And he let me ride in the tower for a while on the way back. It was so awesome, guys. It was surreal. Um, such a cool experience. It's just like you're alone up there and you're just like one with the waves. It's awesome. And uh, you can also just see everything. So tower is super cool. I definitely want to get one from my next boat or my next boat, my first boat that I buy. Um, or we'll put one on our family's boat. So we'll see about that. Um, yeah, that, that really seems like it for this uh, 32 CV. Um, the reason that I do like the 32 um, the best is because any size larger, you're going to need triple motors and that's more maintenance, more money, more gas, more everything. 32 is a very manageable size and you can go out in pretty much almost any weather. So that's why I really love the 32 CV. Hope to be able to own one one day, probably not brand new, but hopefully a couple years old, I'll be completely satisfied with that. But yeah, this is the 32 foot uh, CV boat. All right guys, I am currently aboard the 2022 Jupiter 32 foot and I filmed before a CV that was also 32 foot, 32 foot and I figured I would give you guys a little bit of a comparison between a Jupiter and a CV, same size. So let's take a look around this boat. Okay, we'll start in the front like we did last time. We come on here. Um, one thing you can notice right off the bat is a super cool custom stitching. So we got a gray with a darker gray and uh, red stitching on here super cool um i really love those seats i will say as a disclosure i believe that this boat looks incomplete to me I, i'm not sure if i'm missing something or um i don't see any switches for any gauges or anything so there are yeah there's 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 definitely a couple things missing on here so can't hold that against them it's just a show boat um, i will say i don't know what the price of that cv was if i remember i'll try to throw it on the screen but this one is six hundred and fifteen thousand dollars for the boat show price which is a hefty price tag for a uh, center console here so starting in the front we have two long seats big old long seats very cool looks like you have some storage underneath very nice uh, a little hard to open i'm sure the cushion comes oh the cushion's got to come off but you got storage under there same storage under here anchor well as always and these side bolsters are also matching the rest of the upholstery with the gray and the red stitching, which is super cool. There's a little shot down the line. No tower on top again, you just got a radar. Big old well, let's check this out. Big, big, big well. That goes way, way back in there. Plenty of room for you to store all of your fishing needs. Also have storage under the seat over here. A little hard to open, but it's under there. More storage. Okay, so one difference I noticed right off the bat is the sides are a little bit um, smaller. So you'll see here, try to give you a little bit of a comparison. Here I am. It's about up to my, a little bit higher than my knee, which on the CVs it seemed a little bit higher. Um, that could be troubling if you're in a little bit rougher seas. If you see here, my knees are up against the side, which is good because you don't want really any smaller than that when you're in the rough seas. But because um, if you get lower, you're going to like tip over the side. But it is nice having your knees right up against the side bolsters. But I think I prefer just a little bit higher to give you a little bit more protection. Got another big storage back here. Assuming that's going to be for bilge and everything. More storage. Side tuned to bilge. We got seating back here with possibly storage yep more storage underneath this one has the option of having seats back here instead of if you remember on the cv it had a little like tackle station so that's a little different this one seems like it's a little bit set up for comfort rather than just strictly fishing like that cv was i mean there were still comfort on the cv but this one is a little bit less um more just about uh you know just family family days and uh fishing days so if you look here, we don't have the bench seating like we had on the CV, but we have bucket seats. So these bucket seats, they can either be in this position like this, or you can sit in them standing up like this. So you just end up just leaning right against it and you're looking up at your dashboard. The one thing I do like is this nice acrylic windshield. If you guys see, it is, you can't see it on camera, but it's a nice rounded um, surface. Um, that CV had the canvas, but I'm not sure if I would prefer the canvas over the um, acrylic. I said the, the pros and cons basically up in the uh, in that video, but 
I'm not sure what I prefer. I would have to um, actually own it and try it out a little bit to test it out. But um, it's really sleek looking. Hopefully you can see it here, give you a little idea. Very sleek, very modern, um, very cool looking. One thing I also love is these uh, black accent bars. Instead of going with white, um, like you have on like that boat over there, the white is really clean, but the black just really works on this boat. Let's see what the whole color is. We got a uh, whole color is black, so it matches perfectly with that. Very sleek black and white looking boat. I'm a big fan of black and white. So <laughs> we got some big old speakers down there. Oh, it looks like we got some tackle storage. Over here, oh no, not tackle storage. Wow, okay, batteries, four batteries in here. Wow, okay, that's pretty crazy. One thing I'm not seeing right off that is uh, like a live well over here. It's missing kind of, the CV had two live wells right here and here. Um, a lot of center consoles also have a big old live well here. Not really sure. This might be the live well actually. I could take a look. Oh yeah, that's the live well right there. So underneath the seat is the live well. A little on the smaller side, but like I said, everything's going to be customizable. And if you want your boat to be set up for fishing, then you're going to be able to get probably more live wells than is on this boat. This one is paired with um, twin Mercury 400s. You see, they only had 300s. I'm gonna go a little bit faster on this one. Have a little bit more horsies. Check out the dashboard over here. So we got two big old Garmin's on here. Um, unlike the CV, it doesn't have a protected um, little enclosure where you can lock your electronics inside but it does have a um, joystick like the last one. It doesn't have the controls for the Garmin, but like I said, this seems a little like it's missing some stuff. Let's see underneath. Yeah, we don't have any switches, as you can tell, under here. So I'm assuming that they still have to add in a bunch of stuff and they can pretty much add in anything you want. Everything custom everything's customizable, guys. Um, as far as visibility, this is me, eye level standing up straight. I am 5'10". So visibility is fantastic actually. Very comfortable, very comfortable helm, black wheel again. Really like it. Very comfortable boat to uh, stand here and drive. Very easy visibility. So check out the cabin on this boat. We got a nice head. Instead of a little like porta potty, we actually got a toilet in there. Sink with a mirror, everything. Wow, very nice. Um, we even got a hatch for a little bit of uh, ventilation. And um, yeah, that's really cool to have on the center console. And I just noticed these big old hatches on the side. Let's take a look to see what these are. Okay, we got storage of some sign. Might be rod storage actually, with these bungees on here. Yeah, I think this might be might be rod storage. Maybe you put the rods in the bungee. I'm not really sure, but nonetheless, definitely more storage. Like I said, no tower on the top here. Again, you guys know how I feel about it. One difference that I will show you is the lack of pole holders. So the CV had pole holders going all the way along. These are just cup holders. Oh, actually, you know, the cup holders and pole holders. I didn't even know it said down there. Did you guys see that? It's got the pole holder option too. That's cool, but it's still only one, two on this side in the front, one, two over here. And then another one, two over here, one in the back, one over here. There's probably one under here, here, and the two up there. So there are rod holder options, but not as many. And now I just noticed is they do not have the rod holders along the side. You end up having a full center console T-top. And then you do not have any rod holders over here. You see they had rod holders over here, probably like six of them, but you do get them up top. So that makes up for it. So once again, if you're looking for a boat that is um, a little bit more family friendly, not just strictly fishing, and you know you want to go to the sandbars, but you also want to go out fishing, this boat seems like it would be a great boat for you guys. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much all I see about this 32 foot Jupiter. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And let's go check out some more boats. Okay, so we are here on the 32 foot Pursuit Center console. And first thing is first, when I looked at this boat, I was thought it was like, no way this is a 32 foot center console. And the one thing that, I, you know, it looks huge. So one thing I looked at is if you look on here, this center console has a 1010 beam, which is pretty big. Um, for reference, our 26 foot Edgewater is a 96 beam. I think the last boat I just came off of the Outrage, I think it was a 99 beam, if I'm correct. But it's noticeably different, this 1010 beam makes the boat huge. So 
like the other ones, let's get started. Let's go look at the front of the boat. Okay, so now this boat is very different from all the other center consoles 32 that I've seen or around the 32 area. So this one's really unique. So you guys are in for a treat with this one. So you take a look up here. We got some nice round, very, you know, U-shaped um, lounge seating up here. Very much like the Boston Whaler that we just got off of, which is actually right over there. <laughs> um, so we got some nice round seating, storage under here and anchor wall up here as always. We got a big old bench seat, huge windshield with big old windshield wipers. And it looks like we're gonna have some storage up here if I can figure out how to open this. I can't figure out how to open up that, so we're just gonna leave it. <laughs> Not breaking anything today that I can't afford. So if we look down here, the sides of this boat are so high. These are the highest sides out of all the boats I sent across. I'm looking, losing track of what I've been on. But the CV, the Jupiter, the Regulator, um, Boston Whaler, I think that's all of them. Um, this is definitely the highest size, which is super cool. Um, they're very thin, actually. As you see, this is a lot thinner than the Boston Whaler and stuff, but it allows for more room for you to run around the boat over here. And I, I'm walking around this boat, guys. I'm still shocked that this is actually a 32-foot boat. It really just does not look like it. But let's continue. There's a lot to see with this. So we do not have any side storage over here, but that's because the walls are always so thin that they just created some more room for you to walk around. Um, looks like we have some storage over here. Big old speakers, no storage, no storage. This is the thing that really stood out to me here. This is where the cabin is. Instead of being on the port side like the other ones, this one's right here in the center console, which honestly, I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of, but you guys see the size of this cabin. This is insane. Let's take a walk in. Here's the cabin. Take a walk in, not gonna fall. True. I mean, I'm standing in this, guys. I am 5'10. I have this much room above my head. I mean, I got a full hand. This is probably about four or five inches um, above my head. So this, this cabin's huge. Pretty much anyone can stand up and not hit their head. But we just have this huge lounge area. I mean, this this is very special in here. Not something you see on one of these size center consoles very often. Got a head over here. Nice sink and everything. Um, overall, I mean, look, look, this, this cabin does, if I was standing in this cabin like this and showing you guys around, would you really think I was on a 32 foot center console? Not at all. So <laughs> this is pretty cool. Um, I wouldn't say it's a fisherman's paradise boat here. A um, little bit more family friendly, maybe take a overnight or something like that in the Bahamas, but um, it, it's pretty nice, but it just depends on what your tastes are. So for me personally, this cabin would be a little bit of a waste but other people I'm sure would enjoy this huge cabin, got kids or anything like that, get out of the weather a little bit. So like that um, Boston Weather Outrage, it has two bucket seats instead of a big old bench seat. Um, this one's kind of a two person, this one is a one person, but unlike the um, Boston Whaler, this one actually has a little bit of a gap here. So it doesn't really make it a bench seat at all. It's, it's pretty much two separate bucket seats, which I would say I would prefer the Outrage a little bit over it because of that reason, but it uh, comes down to personal preference. So we have the helm over here. I'll show it to you. There we are. What's up, guys? <laughs> um, so we got two smaller garments, actually. It's smaller smaller screens we've seen today even though they're not small at all but very clean dash um yeah the buttons are all right here um there's definitely a lot going on here but it's everything's kind of concentrated everything you need it's right here um you don't have to look anywhere else for it just like i said not sure how big of a fan i am having in the side it comes down to a little bit of personal preference on that i guess um, but yeah this is pretty good this is what i see from my side line it's a little bit on the lower side. Um, the Outrage had the step up from over here. That was really helpful. I feel like this boat would really benefit from that because right now I, I'm 5'10", like I said, kind of struggling. I can't really see over the bow. And I just, I like to have a little bit more height on this boat so I can see exactly what's going on. We took a look up top. We do not have a tower up there. Just I'm assuming radar. Again, I can't see him too short. Um, and I do not see any ladders or anything, but you can always get a tower on a boat, guys. It's pretty uh, simple nowadays. Everyone kind of does it. So we got some um, tackle storage, other storage. We got the fishing rod storage over here on the side. And it actually has it on both sides of the boat. Um, the Outrage had it on the one side. I believe it was the starboard side and they had a tuna door on the other. This one still does have a tuna door, actually. Just found right here. 
and it has the rod storage there and there so a little bit of a pro you get some more um, rod storage and the tuna door um, like the other boats nice thin long um, well for you to throw your fish in it's going to be a little bit of storage and your bilge and all of that another well for your fish one thing if you actually look at the t-top over here you have a little bit of a sunroof kind of hatch thing going on here so you can prop it open get a little ventilation in here um although it's kind of strange because there's plenty of ventilation at the center console but i guess uh you know if, if that's your thing you can pop it open and enjoy yourself okay so if you guys look back here we have some more bench seating nice little area and over here we have a nice big station do your rigging whatnot i'm sure there's sinks and stuff under here yep sink one oh they got the grill in here wow okay that's surprising and they got another little cubby here and not exactly sure how this is not exactly sure how this is opening but it, it, it does something not really sure what oh you know what it's another seat that's what it is it's a seat that folds down this is the top cushion that's the bottom cushion folds down got a nice seat to sit on um which is actually great because i was just chatting with this man here um his name's kai shout out to you kai for watching this video and thank you for chatting um but you can sit here and you can also you can just watch your your poles trolling and stuff um which is super pro big pro because with our bucket seat we only have a bucket seat that's facing forward so we have to turn around and just like sit awkwardly to kind of look at our poles or we have to stand up so it's nice that they have the option to just sit down over here and watch your poles trolling out the back so that's definitely a really cool feature to see on this huge 32 foot pursuit um this pursuit is powered by twin yamaha 300s um i'm honestly a little surprised they didn't go for the 425s like over here on this boat i feel like it might need it but once again so you ride it don't really know well it's just a big old uh 1010 beam that i would say that um yeah oh this is cool look at this they got some rod storage up here put the butt of the rod up in here and you can clip your rods right up here so it's really cool that they thought about more rod storage with that here let's check out the rod holder count we got a rod holder here one two three four five six cup holder seven cup holder eight nine nine that side ten eleven cup holder twelve cup holder thirteen and we got some rod holders up there none down here then um but this does have a retractable sunshade which is super cool um probably going to be an expensive feature but uh, you know if you can afford it that's a great thing to have oh in this boat run you five hundred and twenty six thousand dollars so that's more than the regulator was and more than the outrage was but less than the jupiter and i don't know about the price of the cv yet so um it's definitely gonna run you a little bit but you seem like you're getting a really nice boat um very again it's a little bit more of a luxurious boat instead of just a strictly fishing boat and um yeah overall everything looks really good here uh, there's a lot of really solid 32 area center consoles that you guys could get and um it really doesn't seem like you go wrong with any of them but uh still here still got a lot of time at the boat show so i'm gonna go see as many of these boats as i can and keep showing to you guys so i'll see you guys in the next boat all right guys that's gonna do it for this video in the end pretty much it just depends on your personal preference what kind of boat you guys like if you guys are more of a fisherman then and that's you really all you're doing you're not really worried about going to the sandbars on weekends and stuff like that then maybe a boat like a cv that caters to those interests um the most might be the boat for you but maybe you don't really care about fishing and just want to go out for weekend cruises and stuff like that but occasionally you want to bring a fishing pole on the boat then maybe a boat like the pursuit would be for you all the boats are great options and there are tons of boats that i didn't go over i could have covered you know yellowfin edgewater dusky um there's there's tons of more boat manufacturers that all make these size boats and um all in different price ranges so maybe i'll cover that maybe if you guys want to see it let me know in the comments down below i'll be at the miami boat show in february if you guys want to see that let me know um yeah but that's going to do it for this video I remember hit the like button if you guys like the video consider subscribing down below helps me out a lot uh, remember to follow me on instagram at living underscore salty with two y's i'll put it on the screen right here um follow me there for updates i was posting behind the scenes from the port lauderdale boat show i post more fishing photos and everything 
um so yeah that's going to do it for this video so uh stay tuned for part three which is going to be up during the weekend and in that video i'm going to be going over everything else that i encountered at the boat show so hope you guys enjoyed this video until my next video remember to keep living salty